In this video, I will go over one of the most widely used probability distributions out there, namely the Gaussian distribution. The Gaussian distribution is a parametric distribution which we'll use throughout this course to model probability distributions. And in this video, I give the definition of the Gaussian, but we will also use it as an example for explicitly computing the expectation and variance. Uh, the Gaussian distribution, also called, often called the normal distribution, hence this n, it's a distribution with respect to a random variable x. And it is parameterized by this mu parameter, which we, which we will refer to as the mean. And we have this sigma squared, which we will refer to as the variance. Uh, now this is what it looks like. It has this front factor, square root of 2 pi sigma squared, and this exponential 1 over 2 sigma squared times x minus mu squared. Okay, so what are we looking at? So we have this mu parameter over here. This mu parameter really determines the location of the maximum of this distribution. Uh, because what we're looking at here is the square distance of our variable x to this mu. And if x is close to mu, then uh, the square distance is close to zero, and then e to the power of zero, um, well, it will be close to one. So if we move further away from mu, this distance will increase, and then we have e to the power minus something very large, so the probabilities will decay to zero if we move away from mu. Now, a sigma squared or sigma determines the width of this distribution. If sigma is very small, then uh, we actually really only consider assigning high probabilities to points that are close to mu. And as soon as we leave the vicinity of mu, this thing will decay to zero because this thing quite rapidly becomes very large. Um, yeah, and if sigma becomes very large, then we get a very wide distribution and then we start um, more equally assign probabilities to all of these values on, on the x-axis. Still, they decay to zero if we move away from mu. Then we're looking at a distribution and distributions are normalized to integrate to one. So if we integrate this distribution with respect to its random variable x, this entire thing should evaluate to one. And that's why we have this correction term up front. So we have a mean parameter. This determines the location of the maximum of this distribution. And we have a variance parameter, which determines the width of this distribution. Now I've been calling this parameter mu the mean of the distribution. And I do this for a reason, because if we actually compute the mean, if we compute the expected value of x, which is random relative to this normal distribution, we can show that this mean becomes mu. So now we have an analytic form of the distribution. Let's actually do this computation. Let's actually compute the expected value. Okay, so this is what we do. We compute the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x weighted by its probability. So multiplied this Gaussian distribution. Now this uh, integral looks quite complicated. It's hard to compute, so we're going to simplify it and we do this via a change of variables. So I'm going to make a clever choice here that significantly reduces uh, this integral. So I choose y is one over the square root of two sigma uh, squared times x minus mu. And I do this because if I insert this in, in the equation, then actually this exponential becomes e to the power minus y squared. Of course, we also need to substitute for the other instances of x. So let's see what x should be. This basically defines x to be um, the square root of two sigma squared times y plus mu. Okay, so let's plug it in into the equation. Okay, and now also we have to take a look at this integration measure. So let's see, dy dx is given by one over two sigma squared, uh, the square root of it. So dx has to be square root of two sigma squared dy. So we plug it in. Now this already looks a bit more friendly. Uh, we can clean it up. We can get rid of these terms, these factor out. And what we get is 
And what we get is the integral of two components, really. So we're computing now the integral of uh, two functions. One is an odd function. So this is y times the exponential of uh, minus y squared. So this is an even function. This is an odd function. So this becomes an uneven or an odd function. And we know that if we integrate odd functions from minus infinity to infinity, the left part of the domain cancels out the positive part. So we actually know that this thing, this part of the integral will evaluate to zero. Now that greatly simplifies our uh, integral. Now we only have to look at the integral of e to the power minus uh, y squared. And for this, we're going to make use of this property that this integral evaluates to the square root of pi. So that gives us mu divided by the square root of pi times the square root of pi is mu. Okay, so what I showed is if we actually compute the expected value of x, where x is a random variable relative to, to this Gaussian distribution, which is parameterized by a mu and a sigma squared, we actually obtain that this expected value becomes mu. Now this is quite an exercise, but the main point is that I wanted to show you an example of how to explicitly compute the expected value and show you that given an, an analytic or parametric form of a distribution, we can indeed analytically derive solutions. There's no magic to it, but it does require some mathematical practice. And I show this example because throughout this course, uh, we will work with Gaussian distributions a lot. We will make use of formulas that are based on derivations like these. And the least I hope for is that when the book or me in one of the talks explains that some property or some statement is true and that the proof has its origins in computations like these, uh, I hope that you believe of what I'm saying is true because of, well, you showed an ex I showed an example just now. Uh, that's the very least I hope for. But what I really hope for is that next time when I say this follows from this and this and this, that you verify this yourself. Because I truly believe that making such computations yourself is the best way to really master the theory. Okay, with that said, let's have a closer look at the variance. Notice that before I already referred to this particular sigma squared term as uh, the variance. And I did so because when we explicitly compute the variance of a random variable defined relative to this Gaussian distributions, uh, we indeed uh, come to the fact that this variance evaluates to sigma squared. So we're going to show that the variance of x is going to be sigma squared. Okay, so let's compute this thing. We're computing the expected value. So from minus infinity to infinity, we integrate x minus its mean squared weighted with the probability. So weighted with this Gaussian distribution. Again, we're going to simplify this integral by doing the same change of variables. So x minus mu squared will become, uh, let's see, 2 sigma squared y squared. And then we have this front factor. The exponential becomes e to the power minus y squared. And the integration measure had this uh, factor 2 sigma squared dy in it. Again, let's uh, factor out these terms. So this is the integral that we have to compute. So we're mainly looking at a function that looks like y squared times e to the power e minus y squared. And again, we're going to make use of our mathematical experience in this particular case. I showed it here. We're going to use this convenience trick. This is the integral that we need to compute. And we make this identification that if we have an integral of e to the power uh, minus a x squared, if you take the derivative with respect to a, this x squared pops up in the front and we obtain the integral we are interested in. Now this integral we know how to compute. It evaluates to square root of pi over a, where this a is sort of obtained by the substitution of variable uh, trick. And then we computed its derivative. So we have a way of actually analytically computing the integral of this thing and it evaluates to a half square root of pi over a to the power three. Now in our particular case, a will be equal to one. And we know then that this integral, so we have this constant over here. And we have the solution of the integral, which is given by a half square root of pi 
So we see that this entire variance evaluates to sigma squared. And that's why we call sigma squared the variance of the Gaussian distribution. So let's summarize this. The Gaussian distribution is defined in the following way. It consists of this exponential, which consists of uh, computing the, the square distance of x to mu. And this is scaled with the sigma parameter. So mu determines the location of the maximum and sigma makes it wider or smaller. And this is a normalization uh, factor that makes sure that this distribution integrates to one if we integrate over the random variable. Uh, then we showed that indeed if a variable x uh, is drawn from such a distribution, then the expected value of x is given by mu. So that's the mean parameter and the variance is given by sigma squared. Finally, I, I would like to point out that uh, the Gaussian distribution is also defined in the multivariate case. So if we're dealing with multidimensional vectors. So now my x consists of all these components x1 up to xd. So I have a column vector of uh, variables. Now the Gaussian distribution takes almost the exact same form, except now um, we have, well, that the, that the mean is also a vector and the sigma becomes a matrix, a covariance matrix. So what you see here, if you're familiar with, with geometry, this looks like a Riemannian metric where we scale the distance between x and mu with some uh, anisotropic metric. And here we have this factor that makes sure that this uh, distribution integrates to one. And actually there is a vertical line missing here. Now we do not take the square root of sigma, but we take the square root of the determinant of sigma. So the determinant is denoted with this. Okay, so also here we have the parameter mu, which represents the mean. We have this sigma, capital sigma here, which is called the covariance matrix. And this covariance matrix, so really the sigma is the covariance of x with itself. Now this is something we can prove, like we can explicitly compute the covariance with respect to this multivariate Gaussian distribution, just like we did in the previous cases. But this is quite a tedious task. And I would like to refer to chapter 2.3 if you want to get a better understanding of where this covariance uh, comes from. Yeah, now this covariance matrix is a D by D uh, matrix, and it determines the shape of the distribution. It can make it anisotropic in one direction and can make it elongated in one of the other directions. Okay, now also for this case, let's go over some computations that explicitly compute the expected value of X. So we're going to compute this integral over the entire domain RD of X weighted with this uh, Gaussian. Now we can simplify this integral again by doing a change of variables. Now we simply choose uh, y to be x minus mu. Now in that case, the integral reduces to the integral of over rd of z y plus mu times this entire distribution. Now there's two things uh, to be said about this. First of all, uh, we're looking at the product of an odd function with this even function. So uh, the integration domain is symmetric, so these terms cancel out. So we only need to focus on this mu, which is a constant, and integrating this entire thing. And what we look at here is actually a Gaussian distribution with average with mu zero. So this is really a distribution with some parameters. And we know from Gaussian distributions that they integrate to one if we integrate over uh, the variable, the random variable y in this case. So we know that this thing integrates to one. So that would actually give us the result that the expected value of x is given by mu. Okay, good to know. Also in the multivariate case, the expected value of a random variable x defined relative to this normal or Gaussian distribution is given by this parameter mu.